Happy Wednesday, Flosstube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? Today is Wednesday, May the 12th. My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. I talk a lot about cross stitch, crafting in general, knitting, sewing, all the good stuff. And I have a lot to share today. I have, I have a lot to share. I have a list. I had to write everything down. And I'm still probably going to forget some stuff. But uh, <laughs> I figured a list was a good place to start. So we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, normally I try to record on Monday. But uh, it's, been, it's been a very full, uh, it was a very full weekend and full first few days of the week. Uh, Monday was Sarah's 20th birthday and uh, I now have a 20 year old in the house. John and I joke around that we were joking around that for a couple of weeks we had two teenagers in the house because Nicholas turned 13 on the 29th of April and Sarah turned 20 on the 10th. So just for a few weeks there, we had two teenagers in the house, um, but now she has passed into her 20s. So it, uh, yeah, and um, also my mother's birthday, um, I would be remiss to not wish my mother also a happy birthday. My mother's birthday was on May 8th, which was this weekend, and it will be really nice when we can get together again and celebrate together. So a big happy birthday to my mom as well. All right, I have, uh, uh, because Monday giveaway, let's start with that, even though it's Wednesday. So last video, the giveaway that I had up for, for grabs was the My Big Toe Cross Stitch Designs. This is the Christmas Pinkies 5. And we have joy, faith, love, and hope. So I'm assuming this is a series of charts and um, I shared with you last week that I have stitched the joy ornament. I've stitched that one. I just used some stash threads and turned it into, a, it was a pillow finish, a small pillow finish and I just put a, a little hanger on it and I keep it up year round. I think the colors lend themselves to, you know, more than just a holiday ornament. So you can, these, these are all, you know, they don't have to be Christmas ornaments. You can stitch them for whatever purpose you want. Okay. So the winner was, uh, Teresa Vickers. So congratulations, Teresa. I've already left you a comment on the Facebook, uh, comment that was your winning entry. And if you could please email me your address caroline at evertote.com then i will try to get this in the mail to you in short order so the because monday giveaways always happen over on the facebook group friday off the grid and um, you're welcome to join us over there we share stitching pretty much all week long but the reason it's called friday off the grid is things tend to get a little busier on friday evenings 6 p.m your time zone where we choose a project of our own choosing and we aim to get as many hours of stitching time into that whip on a Friday night as possible. So I do hold this weekly giveaway over there. And the chart for this week's giveaway is a Fireside Originals design called Always. So this is the chart. What I really like about this particular design is they have shown it three ways because this is really grab some fabric, grab some floss and stitch it however you want. They've done it here in a really muted version. They've done sort of a Valentine version in a pillow finish. And then on the back, they've got a completely different colorway. So you can see it lends itself to, you know, any sort of translation that you wish to, to do. It's really a sweet chart. Okay. So actually I have already posted this over on the Facebook group. So if you'd like a chance to win this chart, head over there and leave me a comment. So I, um, today's video 
might end up being a little bit choppy. I'm not sure at this point, but I'm having to record it in segments because there's lots going on around here today. So uh, if I, I, I will try to keep track of where I left off, I have my list. So um, hopefully this video won't be too convoluted by the time I end up putting it together. Uh, Sarah's just arrived for the day um, to work, so I've got her. She's she's making zipper pulls this morning. Mm. And I have a fresh hot cup of coffee. Ooh, did I show you my mug? It's my Luna mug today. She is not here with me today. Um, Nicholas is has decided he would like to do school at home a few days a week. So he is, uh, my son is doing virtual school this year. And so I leave Luna at home with him so that he has a bit of company. All right, are you ready? My finish, I have a finish to share. I told you I finished it last week, but I left it at home and I didn't get to share it. So today is the day that I get to celebrate that I have a big finish. So Modern Folk Embroidery Distal Fink Heart is done. And here it is. Ta-da! Oh, I love it. Look at those birds. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, so this is a 28 count, 28 count dirty linen, uh, two over two. And I used two Leo and Roxy flosses uh, in Wisteria and Iris. I used just more than one, probably one and a quarter skein of Wisteria and one skein of Iris was plenty. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. This will one day be a pillow finish. Um, but I have decided that for now, when, for my own personal projects, I'm not going to be worrying about finishing until later because I'm going to put them in a stack. <laughs> I know, sounds familiar, right? Uh, just I'm just so pleased that I've finished it. Did I forget to? Or is that? No, that's a thread from something else. Okay, so one more time. Just one more look. Ta-da! I love it. I'm so happy that I finished this. It's really, really pretty. Oh, I just showed you the back, didn't I? Here's the front. Was I showing you the back the whole time? Oh, goodness. I hope I was showing you the front the whole time. If I wasn't, here's the front again. I have a funny feeling I might have been showing you the back. <laughs> it's gonna be that kind of a day. Oh, it's so pretty. 28 count dirty linen. I just, I really liked the combination of the purple on this color fabric. I, it, it rang all of my bells. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was a really fun stitch. So this I stitched from a PDF that I did purchase from Jacob's online shop, which you can find at www.modernfolkembroidery.com. I think it's under his He's got the, the he's got lots of categories in his shop. I think it's uh, one of the romantic patterns, if I'm not mistaken. But again, I I will have a link directly to this chart in the drop down box below. Love it. Okay, so that's my finish. And next up on the list is normally I try to save shop update um, ever tote information to the end of the of the floss tube, but a, a lot of the things that I'm talking about today involve Leo and Roxy floss. And so um, I, I, I don't mean for this to sound like the whole episode to sound like a commercial. Um, it's just that these are things that I'm working on now all the time in my personal crafting. And so the two really are kind of meshed together at the moment. So um, I hope that, uh, you know, take that, take that, as you will. It's, I don't mean for this to be a commercial. It's just, I don't, I'm not quite sure how else to separate it. Um, but 
to, to talk about modern folk embroidery just a little bit more, many of you will know by now that Jacob launched a, um, a pattern collaborating with Leo and Roxy cotton overdyed floss on Friday. And uh, we were, I was thinking he was going to do it on Saturday, but he got, he was very excited and he was ready to go. And so we, he discussed it with me on Thursday and we decided to go for it, go ahead and do it on the Friday instead. So I am of course talking about Jacob's, one of Jacob's new patterns, um, which is rule of life. And he released two new charts on Friday. One of them is this pattern that I'm about to share with you. And the other one is called Linnet's Song, which I will pop in a photograph here while I'm chatting about it because both of his designs are gorgeous. So the Linnet's Song can be found, again, That his other new release can be found on his website, available as PDF download, www.modernfolkembroidery.com. And, uh, we both, all, we both also think that there are lots of Leo and Roxy floss colors that would be appropriate for that design as well. But uh, the rule of life, rule of life, a Quaker inspired design. This was, this was the bit of surprise that I mentioned last week that was coming down the line from Jacob. And uh, this is what was released on Friday. So this is his new chart and the, uh, you know, it's an S, okay? It is, how does he describe it? It's an old fashioned S that looks like an F. Now, I think he says, yes. I chose to chart, okay, I'm just gonna read you um, a bit of the blurb that Jacob has at the beginning of the chart. He says, uh, for this sampler, I settled on a quote by John Newbery from his 1770 book of verse for children titled, A Little Pretty Pocket Book. The book is filled with little rhymes and life lessons. One of the rules of life reads as follows, bestow your alms whenever you see an object in necessity. To me, it seemed very fitting for use on a Quaker style sample. I chose to chart the lettering exactly as it appeared in the book where the long S replaces the common S we are used to seeing nowadays. All letters on this sampler were inspired by actual 18th and 19th century Quaker alphabet samplers. I mean, how cool is that? So bestow your alms whenever you see an object in necessity. And there's the sweet alphabet. There is a small, tiny error in the chart um, it had something to do with his charting software when he, he went back in and he, it just didn't get caught before the printing of it. There is a little extra um, stitch on top of the letter X in the alphabet, which does not belong there. And of course that also appears in the chart. Um, so I have in the physical copy, I am selling the physical copy of this chart. Jacob is selling the PDF, which is again available on his website, www.modernfolkembroidery.com. I'm selling the physical version of this chart. So it's an actual printed booklet. I'll just give you a little sneak peek of the chart font. See that? It's large and really clear, easy to see. It's, it's actually really well printed. I'm quite pleased with the quality of it. Um, I'm including a small little errata slip of paper inside just to remind you not to stitch the extra little thing on top of the X, but I think it's pretty, it's pretty self-evident. But these little motifs, they're just so beautiful. And the incomparable Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. You know her, you love her. She has stitched the model. And that model is on its way to me in the mail. So um, I will definitely be sharing the real live version of Ellen's model with you as soon as I have it in my hot little hands. Um, she stitched this, I she had some of the floss already and then I mailed her the rest because Jacob has charted this for three Leo and Roxy floss colors, which are Vampish, Plum Shadow, and Caramel. And so we are, well, I, I am selling Carrie of Leo and Roxy. Carrie is the floss dyer of the pair. And um, so these are, 
I don't dye the floss. I just sell the floss. I'm not responsible for this gorgeous floss. <laughs> That's all Carrie's doing. And so um, I'm selling the set of nine flosses. Um, this does this chart in two over two threads. So if you want to stitch it on a 28 count, um, you'll need two strands of floss for coverage or 32. Um, if you want to stitch one thread over two, say on a 36 count fabric or a 40 count fabric or higher, then there is a set of five available, which is just three cards of Vampish and one of each of the other two colors. So it's, um, Ellen's model was stitched on a 36 count one thread over two. And I can share a picture of her stitched piece with you. Um, I'll insert that right here. That's the picture that she shared with me when she'd finished the model. And, uh, and then I'll share the real thing with you when it, when it comes in the mail. So this was a very exciting weekend and even better, even better than the chart and the floss and all that I, that, that, that entails. Um, there will be a stitch along. I will have more details about that in a little bit. Not today because I want to make sure that I've got all of the orders that are in the shop um, when I know at what point the last one of those will kind of be going out the door so that most people can have their supplies in hand before we start a stitch along. Or in my case, in Caroline's case, a start along. Um, makes me happy. It's, it's all good. So, uh, yes, right. Okay. So you've seen Ellen's chart. You've seen all the gorgeousness that is Jacob's design. Jacob, if you haven't watched his video already, I highly recommend that you pop over and just give him a watch because, uh, he has decided to, uh, give back to, uh, a really wonderful charity. 50% of the retail price of his latest design will be donated to charities um, that are to provide COVID relief um, in India. So the website is covid.giveindia.org. And also just, um, just as a side note, myself through Evertote, I have donated $100 US um, to Jacob's charity of choice um, in order to make my own particular contribution to to this uh, worthy worthy cause and so Jacob I'm gonna let him share the amount that he has been able to to share as of now because it is it's rather wonderful and that is because of you that's because of you all supporting um, his design and um, and and purchasing that through both his shop and also the physical copies uh, through me Jacob has made that donation so um, well done well done Jacob what a fun collaboration and I can't wait to do it again I can't wait to do it again we may have a couple things up our sleeves for the year ahead so we'll have to see we'll have to see what happens um, okay, so stitch along information to come. Um, why don't I plan on, once I've got Ellen's model in hand, then we'll come up with a clear plan of when we're gonna start uh, stitching that together. Because I'm certainly going to stitch it as well. Okay, so whip of the week. What did I work on this week? Well, I worked on Santa's Village. Santa's Village, Mrs. Claus's Cookie Shop. And that's what I managed to accomplish. Not a ton for a week, but it has been a rather busy week. So I was pleased to see um, this much progress, period. So I got Mrs. Claus's done. She just needs her, her eyes. <laughs> she needs some eyes. And um, most of the cookie shop, the bottom half is done. And the top, the construction on the top half has, has gone, is underway. Uh, I'm missing one or two colors in the table that has the cookie ornaments on top. 
but I, I know I can easily uh, substitute something else from my stash. I just have to, um, I just have to have a closer look at the photograph cover photograph but isn't it cute it's so cute uh so i'm i'm i've been asked quite a bit oh that you know that same port that was stuck to my finish has, i've just found it stuck to this or actually no it's not <laughs> it was it was another ort, the same one D same thread different ort. uh the fact i've been asked many times what fabric i'm stitching this on and i'm really sorry to say that i i don't know this uh, this piece predates me recording floss tube videos and and frankly i'm i've never been that good at keeping track of my personal stitching um you know once the tag comes off the fabric and i'm i'm knee deep in the stitching of it i i have a very poor memory when it comes to what it is so i don't even have a hope of of telling you what this is i know it's a hand dyed uh, it's it's a definitely a hand dyed fabric. I suspect it's picture this plus of some sort. So maybe if if anyone recognizes what this is, um, it does have a, a bit of a grayish, you know, gray beige sort of tone to it. Um, I know my lighting is not ideal, but I think you're getting the idea. It's a really beautiful piece of fabric. And I'm using the called for um, DMC flosses and each chart uses one specialty over dyed floss and I, I'm, I am using what it's called for. This, these uh, are sold as individual patterns and you can either stitch them as individual charts or you can stitch them all as one. I will be adding the candy cane border. Um, I think I'm going to do it in between each row. I think at this point I think either that or I will take out the top one here and just do it all the way around the outside and forget about doing it in between I don't know we'll see I've got some time to think about it mrs. Claus's cookie shop isn't done yet so and uh, it is a 36 count fabric I do know that it's a 36 count fabric two over two with the called for flosses. And it's Santa's Village by Country Cottage Needle Arts, Needleworks. C Cottage Country Needle, oh, goodness. I said good gravy last week. And Jeanette, Jeanette from Ontario, she said, hi, I'm in Ontario too, and I've never heard anybody say good gravy. Good gravy's a new one. I think I picked up good gravy from Because I, I, I say it, I don't say it a lot, but I do say it sometimes. Um, we started saying it after watching The Amazing Race. Do you remember the cowboys from The Amazing Race? They used to say, good gravy. <laughs> John and I loved it. So we started teasing each other by saying, good gravy. And now sometimes it just sneaks in every now and then. That's funny. I was a little off topic there. Not sure how it got there. But anyways... So Santa's Village, Mrs. Claus's Cookie Shop, that's on my, I, I want to finish that before I put that away again, back in the whip pile. Okay, so I now have some comments and questions from last week's video. So you might remember that I had a wonderful email from Lauren about, uh, some, some newbie questions that she had. And the two main topics were about parking your threads and gritting your fabric. And so I talked a little bit about that last week, but I had some added comments from, from viewers that were, that really add some much more information and a little bit more richness to my sort of very basic, uh, you know, answering of the questions because both parking and gritting are two things that I don't really do. So, um, anyways, let me share with you the, the comments that I received and I'm just going to do them in the order that I took, I took screenshots of them. And so it, I'm not doing just parking and then just gritting. I'm just going to read them as they came in. So, um, okay. First up, I had a, a comment from Holly and Holly, you may remember Holly was, um, a, a really big contributor uh, back to the um, 
Instagram auctions that I was doing to raise money for Mus Muscular Dystrophy Canada back in December. And so Holly, it's always nice to see your, um, your comments pop up on my videos and I hope you're well. So Holly left a great comment here saying, you might want to refer questions about parking to one of the full coverage groups. Now, I make the assumption there that that's, those are Facebook groups there. I believe there are quite a few um, full coverage, full coverage fanatics. I think that one rings a bell that it's a Facebook group that you can join. Um, especially in areas which are high in confetti. So what confetti is in your stitching is lots and lots and lots of one or two stitches of one color. So one color, one color, one color, one color, two stitches of another color, lots of confetti thrown in there that creates that really wonderful sort of realistic effect um, in, your, in your picture, in your design. So especially in areas which are high in confetti, either cross country, diagonal, or block completion make the most sense. So cross country, what that means is cross country is when you, you stitch one stitch and then you move over to your next place where you need that thread and you do another stitch and then you bring your needle down to the next place where that stitch is and do another one. So you're crossing the country of your fabric. Diagonal is where you work your stitches in a diagonal fashion. And I mentioned Brian um, of Blitz Stitch. He is, he is, fabulous at doing diagonal full coverage. I mean, really it's, it's, it's like magic watching Brian's pieces come to life the way that they grow. It really, it's, it's something quite special to watch. So if you don't follow him on Instagram or watch his YouTube channel, that's Brian Blit Stitch, B-L-I-T-S-T-I-T-C-H. Um, wonderful, wonderful stitcher um, of the, I think of him when I think of diagonal full coverage. And then there's block completion, which is where you've got your 10 by 10 square block and you complete that little block before you move on to the next one. So that's block completion. In most cases, carrying threads make sense, hence the parking. Okay, so parking would be, you know, you do your stitch, you don't unthread your needle or you do unthread your needle, either or. And then you just take your thread and you leave it there at the front of the project and you pick up the next thread that you need and either rethread your needle or pull the needle from where you have got them parked and then stitch that stitch and carrying on in that sort of fashion. In full coverage, the floats are covered by subsequent stitching in diagonal or most completion. So we talked about floats last week. Floats are in knitting when you knit a stitch and then you knit a different color three stitches and then you pull that original color and you pull that around to make the next stitch in color work. That yarn that's hanging at the back of the other stitches is called a float. And so in stitching, if you're carrying your floss from one stitch to another stitch, I guess you could call that a float. But Holly's point here, and, in, and that's one thing that I neglected to mention last week, is that your floats in full coverage would be covered by other stitches at the back so that you wouldn't have a lot of dangling threads. You will have some because you don't catch everything, I think. My friend Gerald, Ginger Gerald, he, many of you will know that he stitched the most amazing heaven and earth design of Henry VIII and he does a uh, color complete and so he carries his threads and so if you look he did show the back of his project and you can see um, where he's carried his threads and and you know they're it's perfectly fine most of it is tacked down with other stitches so I'm just gonna reread Holly's comment in its entirety without my chit chat in between so here's Holly's comment in full without added Caroline dialogue so you might want to refer questions about parking to one of the full coverage groups, especially in areas which are high in confetti, either cross country, diagonal, or block completion make the most sense. In most cases, carrying threads makes sense, hence the parking. In full coverage, the floats are covered by subsequent stitching in diagonal or most block completion. So there you go. 
Great, great comment, Holly. Thank you. All right, next up, we had a comment from Candace. Candace is responsible for the Threadrick Award. This is Candace of the, the massive cone of 310, so big that it needed a pair of googly eyes and to be named Threadrick by her students. Uh, <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> All right, so Candace is talking about gritting, gritting her fabric. Candace says, I started gritting in 2019. I had never heard of it before It t before then. It takes a long time. I stitch a 10 by 10 grid for large projects, such as the little sheep, the little house sheep virtues, which I did as one piece. I have always been a stitch one color entirely at a time and gritting has made that much easier. I also find that gritting helps me get used to a particular piece of fabric and its count. It's actually, that's a, that's a really great comment. Um, fun video and it was nice to see the island again. So thanks Candice. Yeah, good. It's uh, these things that we learn how to do, if they're helpful for you, it might be something you maybe you've never heard about gritting your fabric and you decide to try it and it might be the best thing since sliced bread that it all of a sudden changes your stitching world for the better. So that's, that's pretty great. Okay, this next one is actually a new question from Lori. So I'm gonna save this to the end. Um, we'll get through the co other comments here. Okay, the crafty cataloger left, oh, this is a good one, Carolyn Mazio. Now I'm gonna spell this because it's highly likely that I'm gonna forget to edit this information in. So if you want information about uh, parking, you're gonna to wanna to write this down if you've never heard of her name before. So her name is Carol Lynn, and that's C-A-R-O-L-Y-N. My name is Carol Line, and that's C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. So this is Carolyn Mazio, and her last name is M-A-Z-Z-E-O. So Carolyn Mazio, who unfortunately doesn't put out videos anymore, has a lot of good tutorials as well, and her eighth video is a good tutorial about parking. So there you go. If you wanted more information about parking, that's the video to check out. And thank you, the Crafty Cataloger. Okay, all right, now we're back to gritting. From Margaret Jane, and I found this was, this was really funny. Um, well, one of the comments in here was funny, you'll, you'll see. I used Easy Count Grid Thread. I now use four pound red fishing line. And she's got the name brand in here, Cajun Smooth Cast Off of Amazon because I got complaints about stealing of important fish equipment. <laughs> That's funny. So for gritting, again, she uses four, four pound red fishing line. Okay. It is finer than easy count grid thread. So it does not get in the way when stitching. I have dyscalculia, which is number dyslexia. So constant counting is stressful. The grid just gives me the assurance that I'm only off within the 10 by 10 square. Yes, it does take some time at the beginning, but it makes the rest of the stitching so much less stressful. I think that's fantastic. I think that's wonderful. Margaret Jane, thank you. Thank you so much for that comment. That is really useful information. Okay, uh, so that's it for the comments of, you know, filling in the blanks that I left out last week on um, questions about parking and gridding. Uh, and if you have any other questions, um, if you're a new stitcher and you've been, you've been, there's a question that you've been dying to ask, but you've been too afraid to ask away in the comments below and I will address it in the next video. So I had a question from Lori and we did answer myself and a good friend of mine. Uh, we did answer Lori already in the comments, but her question is a great one. And so I thought I would share her question with you. So she says, Lori says, I am not new to stitching, but I have not ever found an answer. I'm working on a large dimensions gold kit. As you know, dimensions use a lot of half stitches. Yes, they do. My question is this, what direction should those half stitches go? The same as the top stitch of your full cross or the opposite? They look quite different. Is it just a matter of preference? I'm surprised dimensions doesn't indicate that. Yeah, um, I think truly this would be a preference kind of thing, right? There are no, I, 
I, I always like to think there's no right and wrong way to stitch. If, if you love the way it looks going in one direction versus the other, then that's the right way for you. The way that I would do it, because of how I like the way things to look, I would want that half stitch to be going in the same direction as the top leg of my full cross. So um, I, have to, I have to stitch in my head. My top cross, because sometimes people have, you know, my top cross is always, um, if I do this, it's gonna be the opposite way in your, I think, to you. Uh, my top cross goes from the top left to the bottom right. And so my half cross, I would want that to go the same way. My first leg of the cross is the bottom left or top right to the bottom left, this way. I don't always start in the same hole, depending on which way, like if I'm, if I'm working, I am a full cross completer, which is the, Jacob, Jacob has answered this before. I, I feel like such a fool because yet again, <laughs> it's like cottage country needleworks, C country cottage needle. Like it's the same thing week after week after week. And I used to, I used to say to John, because I taught piano lessons for a hundred years and every week I would come down at the end of the night and it didn't matter which child it was because it would be any child, pick a child and you're teaching the same scale week after week after week and can they remember the difference between harmonic minor and melodic minor scales? No, they can't. You know, <laughs> three years later, you're teaching the same scale. And it is like, it is, I am exactly the same way. So who did I think I was thinking that I was better than them that I could remember the difference? Because there are some things that I just, I cannot remember English versus Danish method of stitching. English method, I believe, is completing each cross as you go. Danish method is doing one leg all the way across the row and then coming back all the other way, completing the cross. I am normally an every cross completer. If it's in my best interest to do a Danish method for four or five stitches to save a little bit of floss, because I am a frugal floss stitcher, then that's what I will do. So anyways. <laughs> Side note, side note. So, um, Lori, I hope that answered your question. It was, it was a great question. And I, I'm sure that there are lots of other stitchers out there who are wondering the same thing. So great question. And that was it for comments and questions from last week's video. So again, if you have a question, leave it below and I will, um, I, or myself, someone else, if you see a, a question in the comment section, feel free to jump in. Okay, so I'm getting the feeling that this is going to be a very long video. So I hope that, uh, I hope you've got a lot of stitching to do while we're visiting today. Okay, so next up, I wanted to talk briefly about something that I'm working on that was completely the brainchild of Libby, of Cheeky Mare on Floss Tube. So you can check out her channel, it's Cheeky Mare. I will link to her in the drop down box below. Um, she emailed me shortly after the Leo and Roxy, Leo and Roxy sampler collection came out in April. Um, and she was looking at the colors and she said, I think that, I think these would work really well for Rosewood Manor's Spring Quakers, what do you think? And I, said, yes, I, I really agree. I think that would look fantastic because I've had this chart in my stash for years. So here it is, Rosewood Manor, Spring Quakers. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It calls for Valdani uh, three strand floss. And what that is, is it comes, you see these little balls down here? Where are they? Right there, little balls of floss. That's how they come. And you simply, they, you don't have to separate them. So it's kind of cool actually, uh, the way it comes off the, the ball, you just pull the three strand, you clip it and you start stitching. I have a couple of, of, of balls of the Valdani in my stash, but I actually have never stitched with it. I've done a little test stitch with some other Valdani floss, but I've never used the three strand to stitch a project with. So, um, what we're doing is we're converting those flosses to 
a Leo and Roxy similar palette and then we're going to do a stitch along together. So anyone who wants to join in is more than welcome. And of course you don't have to do the Leo and Roxy conversion. You can convert it to your own colors, whatever you want to do. Um, it, this is just the, the floss that we're going to choose to use. So um, I, I'll show, I'm not quite, I don't have the full conversion done yet because I, we didn't have, I've, I've been discussing this with Carrie, the dyer, and the greens that we had, only one of them was really, really right, and that was the color sage. And so um, we were looking at the different colors together yesterday, and she's going to come up with a lighter version of the sage and a nice, super rich, dark version of the sage. So using the same, um, it will have, it will be three tones of the same type of green. So they will work beautifully together. So of course the dark sage is done, but the light sage still needs to be, to be dyed. So that's why the conversion is just not quite ready yet, but I've got all the other colors picked out. And if you, if you already purchased the sampler pack back in April, you'll have several of the colors already. So I, I'll just quickly show them to you. But again, because this isn't ready, I'll do another update video when they're ready to go. But just because the colors are so pretty and it's really exciting. So I thought if anybody wanted to join in, you could start thinking about it now. So here's the color palette and here's the flosses that I've picked so far to go um, in the conversion. So the only two that are missing are the two greens. It's going to, I had, I had Sarah help me with the math. The Valdani three strand is 27 meters. And because you don't separate it at all, you need 27 meters of floss. Two of the colors, um, Karen Kluba, who is the designer, the genius behind Rosewood Manor, she states in her pattern that you will use almost all of two of the greens. And I think it's the medium green and the dark green. So each skein of Leo and Roxy is eight yards, which is just over 7.3 meters. 27, so you need, you need nine, and because you'll be pulling two strands, for two over two. I'm doing mine two over two on a 28 count fabric. You'll need nine, the equivalent is about nine yards of, uh, of floss to equal the 27, no, excuse me, nine meters. <laughs> See, this is why Sarah helped me with the math. I promise you we've got it sorted out. Um, so in a nutshell, one skein of each color is enough because you won't be use you wouldn't be using the full ball, the full 27 meters of each of the colors except for the medium and the dark green. So I am going to put together sets of 14 that include two skeins of the medium and two skeins of the dark green, one skein of each of the other color, and that should be enough to do two strands over two. If you want to do one strand over two, you'll only need one skein. I believe you'd only need one skein of each of the greens. Anyways, um, so the colors, this is that green. This is the sage. So that's sage. Let me just add them in together here. This is flamingo, vixen, Bright Merlot. Now Bright Merlot was a one of a kind, but Carrie is currently working on a not one of a kind version. So this will be part of the set. And then we have Bebe. Now these are the ones that I have paired together. So Bright Merlot and Bebe will be in the flower together. And then Vixen and Flamingo will be the, the darker flower. And then we have Haystack, Caramel,
steel, misty lavender, and you're getting a sneak peek at a new color, coho. So that one right there. So that will be, that will be the set. And the other thing is that I have picked out my fabric. And the reason I have picked out my fabric is because Carrie, you probably knew this was coming. Maybe you guessed. Carrie is trying her hand at dyeing fabric. So this is coming down. This is coming down, down the way. Um, but here's what she started with. And I said, that looks perfect for spring Quakers. And she agreed. So this is the fabric that I'm going to use. And it's completely difficult for you to see. There, look at that. So Carrie dyed this. This is the Leo and Roxy first. It is a 28 count and it's, it hasn't been named yet. <laughs> she said we could call it two day old bat scat, <laughs> something like that, or just light brown, light brown. We do like the funny names, but it is, Carrie is, um, <sighs> wow. I just, I love it. So that's my fabric. Spring Quakers, this, there's the colors. I just need a couple more greens. So I guess stay tuned. It's not ready to go yet, but the, I just wanted to share with you sort of the exciting process of putting it together because it's really, it's been a lot of fun. It's really been a lot of fun. And so a massive thank you to Libby. And um, I am going to be sending Libby a, um, a, a set as a, as a thank you for, you know, a small thank you for her idea of doing this because it's so fun. So, um, make sure you subscribe to her channel and, um, and follow along with us as we, as we start this project. I think Shiloh X stitch MD, I think she's in as well. I think she's going to be stitching this along with us too. So knowing Shiloh, she'll probably finish it. <laughs> she'll finish it really fast. Anyways, okay, so that's Spring Quakers. Um, you might remember I'm also working on a conversion of Nevermore. I've, I've reached a little stumbling block with the little, um, there's a section just above the bottom border that has a, um, it's like a little pennant, uh, what do you call those? You know, the pennants that kind of flap in the wind. Um, bunting, that's it. It's kind of like upside down bunting. And I, I've i tried three different colors and wasn't happy with any of them. So I've ripped it all out again. I was hoping to share that with you today, but I'm just not happy with it yet. So I'll try to share that next week. Okay, um, next up, I wanted to share somebody else's whip with you. And this is from Candy. Candy is a, a viewer, um, she's been a viewer for a while. And uh, she reminded me through her whip that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So I just, I, I loved her whip. I loved her project. And she, tag, she had tagged me in it because she was using some Leo and Roxy floss to stitch the design. So I asked her if I could share it with you and she agreed. And, uh, and so here it is. I think it's a great chart. So I'm gonna pop it in right here. And I just, um, Candy also shared the information on the chart with me. So just so that you know, in case you think it's as awesome as I do, it is, uh, the pattern is by Stitch Life, uh, and their Instagram handle is at Stitch Life Mag. And the fabric is a 16 count diversity by Mystic Fabrics. And the floss is Leo and Roxy, My Funny Valentine. And I think, I think that is an awesome, awesome project. So Kenny, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Wonderful. Just fantastic. 
Okay, so I have a little bit of happy mail to share. I have a little bit of happy mail to share. I received a few things in the mail. Um, first of all, this was from fellow Canadian, Anna. Now, Anna, Anna and I sort of connected, uh, I think it was just last week, might have been even the week before, uh, because Anna had some super exciting news. Um, she and her family had just purchased a home, and if you're not following her on Instagram already, she is, you can follow, find her as Stitch Toolbox. And Anna makes the wonderful project bags that have the vinyl front so that you can see what's inside your bag. And she also does a monthly bag of the month club. And uh, she was stitching one of the charts that was included I'm not sure what, which month this chart was from, but it was a Twin Peaks primitive chart um, that a couple other uh, stitchers jumped in on a stitch along as well. And so I had sent Anna a message, you know, saying congratulations on such an exciting, you know, I mean, that's, that's huge, buying, buying a home for your family. I mean, that's really exciting. So Anna and I were chatting, chit-chatting back and forth on Instagram, and she said, "Oh, I should send you a, I'll send you a True North needle minder," and I said, oh, "Okay, I'll so, I'll send you some uh, 11 points Leo and Roxy floss. 11 points. If you if you've been wondering, and I I have mentioned this before, but the Leo and Fox Leo and Roxy floss that's called 11 points is named after the maple leaf in the Canada flag, or our maple leaf. Maple leaf has 11 points, and it is." Um, it's a pretty Canadian red. So I had offered to send her some floss as a little trade. And Anna, I can absolutely guarantee you that yours will be well behind um, arriving to you than yours was to me because someone forgot to put it in the mailbox. But it is on its way now. So hopefully you'll get it soon. But Anna sent me this wonderful needle, mag needle, needle minder. Look at that. Isn't that, I mean, that's just fantastic. And she made me a scissor fob. Look at this beautiful scissor fob. So Anna, I can tell you right now, my work, my favorite work scissors do not have a scissor fob on them. And now they do. So thank you. Thank you so much. I love it. It's a really beautiful butterfly on the bottom. It's really pretty. I love it. So you can find Anna. She is Stitch, tool, Stitch Toolbox. Love it. That's awesome. Thank you, Anna. So that was really fun to receive in the mail. And speaking of vinyl front project bags, I received something in the mail today that has been it's been in the mail for a while from Deborah. And Deborah, I haven't even had a chance to message you because I just opened this up this morning. It just arrived. I just got it. And um, I haven't even had a chance to send you a message and say that it arrived safe and sound. So I will do that probably before this video goes up. So hopefully you'll you'll know that it received. So Deborah is from Belgium and she and I as well. If you're on Instagram, if you're if you're not on Instagram but you've been toying with the idea of joining Instagram, I know it's social media and lots of people don't really like social media, but um I I've found it really a really great place to meet people who you know you share a common love of stitching and then you you start chit chatting in you know on their photos and and it's it's been a really wonderful way to meet new people um, you know all over the world which is amazing so Deborah's from Belgium you can find her Instagram she is Suri Mini I I think I have that right on Instagram and she is a beautiful stitcher and sewer so that's how you spell it Suri Mini, S-U-R-I-M-I-N-I. -I, -I. I hope I'm saying that right. And she had, uh, Deborah had mentioned 
that she had something that she wanted to send me. Um, and this was a while back. As you can imagine, the mail postage, post, the post office is a bit um, slow at the moment. Um, remember that floss that I sent to Ellen? <laughs> Ellen lives two hours away from me. I paid, I think I paid $15 to send some floss express post and it still took eight days. Pandemic. It's, you know, what, what can you do? You uh, just say, thank you. Thank you for working so hard to deliver our mail. Seriously. It doesn't matter how long it takes as long as it gets there in the end. And so Deborah, this arrived and I, I just, I don't even know what to say. It's just such an amazing gift. So, um, Deborah is making project bags now and selling them. And she is making, um, the, again, the vinyl front bags and they are quilted. They're beautiful. So again, that's Surrey mini and I will link to her shop in um, in the in the drop-down box below again she's in Belgium this is just beautiful this is absolutely beautiful there's the back it's wonderful I have to replace my battery okay um, there was a needle minder in the bag as well but I left it at home I'm sorry Deborah it's beautiful thank you she made me a grime guard and it's music fabric. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I'm pretty sure this is an 11 inch square. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Now grime guards are used on Q-snaps or hoops um, to help protect the outside of your fabric as you're holding the, the frame. Isn't it pretty? It is black. It's blowing out of it. There we go. And it's a, it's a little bit of a shiny metallic print. It is beautiful, Deborah. Thank you. Really, really nice. I love that. And she sent a few charts. My favorites. They all have birds. <laughs> I mean, I think Deborah knows. Um, so this first chart is the Bluebird of Happiness. This is, um, these are cottage garden, cottage garden samplings. Uh, these charts are absolutely beautiful. And this chart I actually own. So I will be saving this one for a giveaway. How about we make this one next week's Because Monday giveaway? Thanks to Deborah. So I will send this out to someone else, to uh, some lucky person is going to get this next week. And then Summer Bliss. I do not have this chart and I love this chart. It is beautiful. And then a Plum Street Samplers called Cotton Bird. That's beautiful. Love that. Okay. And this this final thing that was in the in the box, I I don't even know what to say about this because it is so fantastic. Where do you start? Are you ready? Look at this. O M G. Look at this amazingness. Look at those mushrooms. Gerald is going to be so jealous. <laughs> I love this so much. I mean, look at this amazing fabric. Look at that stitching. This has got to be, I, I've looked at it pretty carefully. Um, this fat, I want to know, first of all, did you dye this fabric or did you purchase it? And where did you get it from? So that I can tell people, cause this fabric is amazing. It looks like an 18 count Ada. 18 or even 20. 22 count I think it's an 18 and she's stitched one strand she's used one strand of floss on this on this fabric it is perfection 
Look at it. Wow. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And she's turned it into this phenomenal project bag. Now, Deborah has done this a lot. She has turned her own stitching into some really beautiful project bags. So I don't know if she does this as kind of a custom thing that you can request that she will turn your stitching into um, a project bag. But Deborah, if you want to leave me a comment below and let me know, then um, I think that's a really valuable service. It's not something that it's not it's not something that I offer to do, um, but you do a really really beautiful job. And so if you if that is a finishing service that you offer, let me know so that so that stitchers will know because this is phenomenal and um, beautiful, simple. Um, it's like a um, it's not a twill. It's what's the word for it? It's like a cotton sort of, um, ah, uh, I know the words, <laughs> the words are not there. And then a really nice, um, she's matched the lining to the topping of the bag. It's gorgeous. It's beautifully finished. I love it. And I did have, I brought my floss. Um, actually I had my floss for nevermore in here, uh, that I was, <laughs> that I need to swap out cause it wasn't working. <laughs> so Oh, I just love it. Deborah, thank you. It's it's a it's a treasure. It is a treasure and I will be using it all the time. I love it. I love both of them. And the Grime Guard. So be ready for that one chart for up for grab next week. That's the Bluebird of Happiness. That will be I will give Deborah's chart away next week. Thank you again, Deborah. Just a really wonderful, wonderful gift. My last bit of happy mail today came from Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. Jacob sent me a package, a, a gifty package all the way. <sighs> Jacob. Jacob sent me this amazing fabric. Look at this fabric. Look at this beautiful, beautiful fabric. He had shown me some fabric that he'd purchased a couple of months back from this beautiful shop um, in the Netherlands. It's called Dutch Quilts, and it's in Amsterdam. Um, here is the, here's the card. I hope you can read that. There we go. And there's the address and information. He had shared with me a photograph of a little quick video that he took of some fabrics that he had purchased from them because I had my I had admired um, I had admired some iCat fabric that he had and then so we were talking about fabric and so he sent me a, a little video of a purchase that he'd made from this particular shop and I was ooing and aahing and you know it's it's it this is this is luxury fabric and it's so beautiful and he sent me some and so I was thinking, I, I'm, I really want it to be something that I will see and use on a daily basis. So I'm not gonna be using this for finishing projects. There is enough fabric here that I can either make some really beautiful um, pillows for my bed, or I can use it with um, a few other complementary fabrics, and I might make myself a quilt. What do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely beautiful. So this is, um, here's the design name. I won't try to pronounce it, but in case you absolutely love this fabric as well, there's the, the fabric band information. And it's from I Like, <laughs> I Like Fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great name, but it's I like E Y E. There we go. I like fabrics. I do like fabrics. And Jacob, this is a beauty. Wow. Thank you, my friend. This was a really just a wonderful, beautiful gift. Um, and so Jacob also included a beautiful card, his handwriting. Uh, you can imagine 
his handwriting is perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Just like everything that Jacob does. It just looks good. Everything looks good. And it's just wonderful. And the quilt shop even included, oh, this is so sweet. Look at that. Like, doesn't that make you, it makes me want to go check out their shop and buy more. <laughs> that is gorgeous. I mean, their fabrics are beautiful. All right. But anyways, he also sent me his CD. And if you didn't know that Jacob loves to, he loves music and he is a very talented musician, then let me tell you, he has a wonderful CD of his own music out. I think it was 2018 that this was, because I remember seeing it at the same time that the, I remember first listening to snippets of it and hearing um, what he had posted on his website back in 2018 when I started the mystery stitch along in 2018. By the way, that's another piece that is coming out soon. I'm stitching that with Vicki Clayton silk and I have got to put some stitches in that this year. It's got to come back out. So Jacob sent me his CD, which I love. And so, but what's, what's really interesting about Jacob's CD is that last year, Ellen, Ellen Reed, Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour, who also happens to be one of the premier members of the wildly famous Canadian band Crash Test Dummies, sent me her solo album. Recognize Ellen there? There she is, Glamour Girl. Ellen sent me her CD. So Jacob and Ellen both sent me their CDs you know, like properly done, they're, they're legit musicians. Well, little do they know that I have a CD too. <laughs> I have a CD too, look, look guys. Me too, me too, I have a CD of my very own. But my CD, <laughs> you only get it if you're gonna get married and you wanna order music for your wedding ceremony. That's the only time you would get this CD from me. Um, yeah, I also have a CD out. I know these things that you find out about me, right? We dig down the, the onions, the onion has many layers. Uh, so that's me. You can tell it's me by the big hair. And that was my partner at the time. Her name was Sarah. Um, and in this photograph, actually, um, I am pregnant with my own Sarah. I know, it's not gonna focus, is it? And you can totally see the reflection of the camera in there. So that's me and my, my partner at the time, Sarah. And we were duo de gala, and we were a classical flute and guitar duo, and we played weddings. We played a lot of weddings. <laughs> we played wedding after wedding after wedding. Um, we were mostly popular for venues that did not have um, you know, an organ or something. Though we did play, we did play in lots of, of churches, but mostly we were, um, we played a lot of outdoor ceremonies because we were quite portable. <laughs> Our instruments were quite portable. And uh, so this, we put this together, I think we paid 75 bucks for studio time to have it um, engineered and we were like in and out of there in an hour. So there was not a lot of, of time spent on, you know, if we, if we did it right the first time, it was like, that's it, that's the take, done. Um, a track from this was used on the original Fiber Friends uh, episodes, just a little piece of, another piece of the onion, <laughs> another layer of the onion there. Um, so we would do, we would do bridal shows, you know, we would rent a booth at a, at the convention center and we would set up our sign and, um, people would hire us to play at their weddings, sometimes as much as, you know, two years before their ceremony. And, um, we would, the, the CD was a way for us to have something tangible to give them so that they could select their music. And in the end, it kind of became like, uh, ordering fast food they would they would call and they would talk about the contract and, and the music they wanted and they'd say we want a number one a three and a five 
because they had to pick music for the processional, the signing of the registry, and the recessional. Everything else we would provide, you know, half an hour of pre-service music, and that was all just um, stuff that we chose that was all very similar veined classical music. But, you know, these are all the sort of standard traditional wedding tunes, Pachelbel's Canon, um, Trumpet Voluntary, etc. So, Ellen and Jacob, I have a CD too, but maybe if you're lucky, I'll send you a copy. All right. Whew. Okay. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done my list of stuff. I had so much to share today. I have, I have zero clue how long this video is going to be today, but I have a funny feeling it's going to be long. So if you're still here with me today, then you get to see the one purchase that I treated myself to. And once again, it is Leo and Roxy. Big surprise. Um, Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. celebrated their third birthday uh, a couple weeks ago. And they offered a surprise uh, yarn to celebrate their birthday. It, you didn't know what you were going to get. It was a surprise. And so I said, sign me up. Happy birthday, girls. And it came. Carrie dropped it off the other day. And here it is. So it's a soft set and it is absolutely gorgeous. I just, I love it. I love it. I had to have it. I had to celebrate their birthday with them. And so I purchased this when it was still a surprise. I had no idea what I was going to get. And I'm so happy. It's like beautiful. It's gorgeous. Look at those colors, that navy, um, small, her heels and toes is just perfect and the variegation I mean, look at this that pop of color so I don't know when I still have to finish my <laughs> my Fruit Loop socks um, Fruity Pebbles socks but this is this is going to go in my bin of special special yarn save it for a special occasion so the name on this colorway is we are this many three sock kit so there's the colorway right there it's an 80 20 and it's absolutely gorgeous so happy birthday Carrie and Joe Lynn congratulations on celebrating three years of Leo and Roxy goodness Leo and Roxy yarn co goodness love it so that was that was my purchase that was my one purchase then that's it. I've reached the end of my very, very long list. And uh, normally I don't have, normally I'm chatty, but I think this video was probably a little bit ridiculously long. So um, next video will definitely be shorter. Thanks again for visiting with me here today. And I will, I will try really hard to keep floss tubes to Mondays. I don't think it really matters to you whether it has to be on a Monday or not, but I like to follow, <laughs> I like to follow a routine and not doing it when I feel like I think that I, I, not that I should do it, but Monday's floss tube day and I feel, something feels a little bit off when I don't manage to find the time to, to do it on the Monday. So, uh, hopefully I can, I can get it on next Monday. Okay, so that's it for me today. I hope you're well, and I hope you're safe, and I hope you have lots and lots and lots of time to get all the stitching done that you wanna do. And on that note, happy stitching, everybody, and I will see you, I'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>